This is David Freytag and today I'm going to show you real quickly just how to add an item to a Cradle project and then add different frames and categories to that so that you can define the types of data that you want to gather. Uh, on our demo project that comes with the evaluation copy and with all installations, we have a number of things in there like requirements, we have definitions, issues, product breakdown, structure, you know, system requirements and verification. We also can have other things that people will add in there. So somebody added in stuff, which is just not a valid item type. So we're going to delete that out. We've removed that from those top level of items uh, that we're going to capture information on. In the database itself, if we'd had any items that were of that stuff category there, that stuff type, uh, they would still be in the project. Uh, we just wouldn't have a way to access them because people wouldn't be able to see that here in the schema. So please be careful if you're going to delete items that you know what you're going to do with the underlying data. If we wanted to add a new item type here, and you want to add things to this particular project, we can add that in quickly there. So now we have a top level item called things along with our system requirements and our system breakdown structure that we can start capturing data on. Once we have this here, it's essentially a blank item at this point. We've got some name and identification type pieces that can be associated with, but not really much else. We need to add categories and frames to that so that we have other buckets and places for that information. So if we look at the requirement item type, uh, it has a number of categories. So we have item status, verification date, other things of that sort that are all captured on there. And it has a number of frames, so different text boxes that we have there and the ability to attach a JPEG. When we go to add these to our things item type, we can add them from the frames or the categories list. So for instance, here we have our list of uh, different categories. We have requirement priority could be one that we want to add. And on those uh, priorities there, this one has a number of different values. So high, low, mandatory, medium, TBD. And you can add other things to that. Say so we'll add why not to that uh, priority list. Doesn't necessarily make sense, but it's you know this easy way to add something to the list. And then we also can go in and add new categories. So if we need to add something to this for so we're going to have a drop down menu for our, our things item type and I selected that to be a multiple value you can have the other things here so for instance we have ones that are designed for our real numbers we have other things that are positive integers uh, you have a date field so that these can be properly formatted date fields and you can set those for your different categories uh, one reason why you may want to have multiple values, so for instance, if you had stakeholders and you could have multiple stakeholders in the item, somebody could select multiple things here. And then we can go in and assign the values. So on this, we're going to be able to have person A, B, and C all the options for uh, adding that category. And then when we look under the frame types, uh, we've got a lot of different file types that are already defined here, or we can add other ones in. So for instance, if somebody has uh, a, an Excel file that they may be looking at cost data or something external to Cradle and you want to attach that, you can use that as a file type or a frame type to attach number of different ways we can work with PDF files, you can work with Visio files, Word documents. And these are all just different types of buckets that you can have on your item type in Cradle so that it knows what application to launch when you want to access that information. So if we come back to our things item type, we can come and add different uh, categories to this. So we're going to definitely add our thing drop down. And we can also add in uh, maybe a part number and a requirement category. So we'll add those three categories to this particular item type. Then we're also going to add some frames. So for this one we're going to say we're going to have some cost data that we want to be able to track with that Excel file like we were talking about before. And I think we need to have an external link. So maybe we've got a a part list that's out on the web or some other thing there that you want to be able to reference with the URL. So we'll make that a, an external link in HTML type. So we've gone through, we've added a couple of categories and frames to that. You can set different calculations and rules, ways that you're going to do the numbering. 
We're also going to look here real quick and look at the change history. You can have it set a number of different ways. Never, always changing draft items that have a baseline and name to a specific uh, category match there. Uh, never, of course, is real easy if you've just got some definitions or things that you don't want to be you know, kept as far as people making changes on there. You don't have to do those uh, important things. You want to keep those uh, every single change on there. You can keep those always. This one right here is pretty useful if you have a brand new project, because if you're loading in a lot of raw data, you're just getting started. Lots of times people will need to uh, run through and do a spell check. They'll need to update and change some information. So you'd have a lot of changes while that really raw information is just being uh, initially developed. So that could be good to just start tracking the changes after that first baseline. Uh, the named category value, uh, th this one, uh, I tend to use less if you've got a particular need for uh, specific category values being matched in order for you to start tracking that. That's an option there, but uh, you need to be careful with using that one just in case you change some values. So we'll say this one's always going to have that done. On the numbering, you've got a couple of different options. You can manually number things so that every time you create something, it's going to have its own uh, number on there that you can write in whatever you want it to be, or you can enable auto numbering. So we can say that we're going to have a prefix. It's going to be thing dot. It's going to have initial value of one and increment in one. If we wanted to have this zero padded, so there were numbers in front of that, we could certainly put a pad in front of those. So that's kind of how we're going to set this one up. And we'll click save. Now when we come over here and start looking at our project, we've got a number of different things that we can do here. So we've got our thing item type that's already been added in with those default queries. And if we look at this sidebar, we have things that are added here. If we wanted to add a new item. Let's select this, add a new item. Just give it a name and open this up. And now we've got a number of things here. So we've got the number that's been put in here, thing.001. We've got the name and different, just general information about who created and when. And then we've got our different fields. So we've got the text fields, the drop down, so we can have this multi-value pick list. We've got the requirement category, so we can select the different pieces there. We can put in a part number. Um, we've got that spot for the cost data and the external link. So we've pretty quickly been able to come in, show how to create a new item, add frames and categories so that you have different buckets and to store things in. Hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, there's a lot of other things you can do in project setup. But this was just looking at that uh, item creation and adding different categories and frames to that. Thank you.